Wouldn't it be nice if these packing material peanut things would move on their own without you having to waste the time and energy of blowing on them yourself? Well, today we're going to invent something here together that is going to do that. And hopefully you learn a little bit about um, electronics. I would say more just like basic electricity and breadboards. And it, you know, this is a beginner. This is a beginner video just for fun. And if you look at it, this is a fan. Now this fan is a 12 volt. You can't really see the voltage on it very well, but it's a 12 volt fan that I reclaimed from an Xbox that was damaged that I would use for parts for fixing mine. Now, one um, problem here is that this is 12 volt and this is 9 volt. So at first glance, it might look like this won't get this to move. So I want you to um, take a guess right now and tell me if you think that um, this 9 volt battery will be able to get a 12 volt DC fan motor to work and spin. And we're gonna now so you already took your guess, right? Okay, so now we're going to see if it will work. So, okay, so let's see here. Um, this, is a, this is a wire where, it's just a simple wire where both ends are male. And let's see if you can see that. Yep, both ends are male. I'm gonna just stick the black wire into here. Um, so it matches. These are very small wires. And then I'm gonna, now with an alligator clip, right? Because let's say, you, let's say you're not in the mood to solder it. You just, you just wanna use an alligator clip just because you just wanna test it. There we go, this is an alligator clip. I like these ones that you can just buy where they already have the um, little sheath on it. And let's just clip that up to the um, black wire, the ground here. Okay, so let's look at it so far. Black wire. All right. I'm going to zoom out so we can see what's happening more here. One second. Okay. Now, this black wire of the alligator clip, I'm going to connect to the um, negative side of the um, battery here. There you go, I can feel a connection there. Okay, can you see okay? Okay, let's see here. How's, how's that? There we go. Okay, and there's the chip thingies. Okay, now here's the positive part. Oh, normally, okay, another, we're gonna talk, we're gonna add a switch to this in a second, but um, uh, normally you don't want to connect things to power while power's plugged in, okay? This is, this is such low voltage, not a big deal. I'm, I'm not worried that's gonna shock me or anything. And then so, uh, let's see here, here we go. Plugging it into here. I'm just doing this for demonstrating it. Okay, and then here's the, this one here. Oops. Okay, oh yeah, and if you're a kid and you're dealing with wires or um, electricity, uh, make sure you get a, a parent or a teacher who is a you know someone who knows what they're doing to have um, fun with you and then do it with you and um, it might be more fun that way okay and safer so this one again it dig in here and see it oh wow you can already see it can you see this watch <laughs> look at that mess your kids are gonna have to clean that up okay so it's obviously spinning. Watch what happens when I pull the power off here. I'm gonna disconnect the ground from the circuit here. Oh, wait, let's talk, before we turn it off, let's talk about this circuit a little bit. Um, oh wow, that's a short. You see that, those two, that's called a short. When they're touching it, <laughs> it's shorting out because um, it was causing the circuit to have a tough time there. So black, 
from the negative going into the negative, red from the positive going into the positive. It completes the circuit. Think of the circuit like a um, like a car race. All the electrons are trying to go in the car race and get to the other um, finish line. And I disconnect the circuit here and it doesn't spin. Reconnect it. Right? I'm like barely just touching it. There it is. Spinning again. Okay. So that's called a basic circuit. Now, when you're working with a system and you want to test it in different ways, these alligator clips are clunky, right? So what you could do is, we're going to bring the camera a little closer over here. Whoa, what do we got here, everybody? Look at this. Look at, look at what we got here to show you. Okay, so I'm gonna take it. Let's first zoom in to the breadboard. Now, at first glance, this might look very complex. Oh, what's happening here, you know? But a breadboard is nothing more than a way of um, organizing your connections. Let's look at this 9 volt battery. You may notice that I made a little change to this connection. It's different from the other one. Now what do I mean by that is when I bought these little 9 volt things here we had to use the alligator clips, right? Because these were just loose wires. Well, anytime you have a loose wire like that, you can extract parts from other things. And in this case, it was a um, breadboard, you know, inspired uh, Arduino kind of wire with this very nice uh, plastic female jacket part, I would say, it's a female adapter on it. And if you look at it, let's get a little closer here. Right? I'm going to zoom in over here. Okay, you see this wire here? Let's just plug it in with that. Goes, look at how smooth that is. It goes right in. And the nice thing about it is it makes your system more modular. So I expanded on that with the, um, uh, this is it's kind of a delicate thing here, I didn't do the most robust soldering job, but here's a switch, you'll notice I did the same thing, I did the uh, anode in red, cathode in white, because it's not really going to the ground yet, it's just kind of positive, negative, but it's really just, in the, from the context of this build, it's going in and continuing to go to the positive. So I thought that white would be kind of cool. And, um, you know, this switch is just a little cheap on-off switch that I got. I got like 50 of them, super cheap. And um, for what I thought, it was like less than, it was like less than $10 or something for 50. I mean, you, the things you can get for electronics is amazing. With a breadboard, you can have power coming in from this point here, but the plus, or in this case, I'm having the uh, anode of the battery. Let me push this down a little bit so you can see here. Push this down a little more. Anode of the battery in red, it's going to the plus. This green wire here is actually taking energy from the um, positive part of the battery and it's bridging this gap. If I put, for example, if you look at this, this wire here, you'll notice it doesn't need to be on the other side of the gap and actually if it was, it wouldn't get power, okay, or it wouldn't, it wouldn't be doing well. And the um, since I have this red one over here, I needed the green one there, okay? And if I used a smaller wire for the, you know, like secondary connection thing, then I would have needed to have the red one on this side of the uh, gap. Okay, so I'm kind of going over some breadboard basics here, which I think could be interesting uh, for people if they're 
if they're ever getting frustrated getting their first breadboard set up with anything, you know, not super simple set up. You know, I'd, I would call this with a switch like one step away from your first project. Maybe everybody does the, a um, red LED for their first one, you know, and, that, and then this is very close to that. I would just... Now, now look at this. The switch, the, the red wire, the anode's going to the switch, and then this is calling in uh, through the 1B, okay, and which is the fire connection I know it's a weird name. And then this is going out, the energy is going out the null. Okay, and that's what it said. That they called this the one or the null on the um, manual. And I actually used jumper cables, the um, alligator clips, to uh, test it before soldering it. You know, so that way I got the colors the way I wanted it. So then now, you know, the negative, you could almost say the null is the negative, right? And this is coming through here. This blue one connects the negative. Now you're like, why did I use red? There you go. There's the fan. So you'll notice that the black part, the negative or the null of the switch is going in to the positive of the fan. Okay? And then that is going to um, the negative of the battery completing the circuit but you'll notice nothing's happening and the leaf is not moving and uh, if you look here the switch is in um, the switch is off I'm gonna turn it on I'm gonna let go of that and the feather not feather the um, little fan the little Thing. See? It's just moving in the wind there. Right? And then the switch. I'm gonna turn so I'm gonna actually I'm gonna keep it focused on the leaf. Flip the switch. Off. You see the fan stops? Flip the switch. On. Flip the switch. Off. Now, a couple things to uh, think about here is if I wanted to change how this was done, let's say I wanted, this is going to be a little bit weird, but let's say I wanted, look at this, maybe I wanted things to work backwards. Will this work? Will it work? Will this thing still work if I flip these two? What do you think? Well, doesn't make sense for the positive to go where the negative goes. That's does that doesn't make sense. So it's we're gonna see what happens here. Why don't you pause the video and take a guess? Isn't that it's going in kind of? So let's see what happens there. And it does work. That's weird, right? It does work, even though they're flipped. Does it still? Well, wait. We'll make sure that it is. It is turned on. This fan is definitely spinning. You can kind of hear it. I can. What about if I flip the switch? Turns it off it's definitely breaking the connection so that's interesting and uh, now I wonder what you're thinking about the um, uh, 9 volt because this is a 9 volt battery how is it powering a 12 volt fan and um, the thinking on that is since this fan is direct current it's able to still um, it's still able to turn on with the nine volt power, but it's probably not working at its optimal speed, and that you definitely don't want to power a, um, you know, anything important with uh, suboptimal power. Um, the Xbox needs 
that 12 volts for the other um, things in there, such as the DVD-ROM and the hard drive. It's all it's all set around 12 volts. So if you're working, if you're just working on something for like learning or science, then uh, and you're working with direct current, then sometimes you can get away with less than the normal amount of uh, voltage. Um, but I would recommend you know trying to match up those numbers if possible. And uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope this was enjoyable. And if you want to see more uh, of this content, you know, let me know, and then I'll make more. Thanks. Bye-bye.